Hello and welcome. My name is Shannon Kemp and I'm the Chief Digital Officer of Dataversity. We'd like to thank you for joining the current installment of the monthly Dataversity webinar series, Real World Data Governance with Bob Seiner. Today, Bob will discuss the impact of data governance on data literacy, sponsored today by Irwin by Quest. Just a couple of points to get us started. Due to the large number of people that attend these sessions, you will be muted during the webinar. If you'd like to chat with us or with each other, we certainly encourage you to do so. Uh, Zoom, and just to note the Zoom defaults to chat to send it just the panelists, but you may absolutely switch that to network with everyone. For questions, we will be collecting them via the Q&A section, or if you like to tweet, we encourage you to share highlights or questions via Twitter using hashtag RWDG. For questions, we will be uh, so to find the chat or the Q&A panels, you may click those icons in the bottom middle of your screen to activate those features. And as always, we will be sending a follow-up email within two business days containing links to the slides, the recording of this session, and anything else requested throughout the webinar. Now let me turn it over to Sue for a brief word from our sponsor, Erwin by Quest. Sue, hello and welcome. Hi, thank you for having me. Um, I think everybody's really in line for a treat today with the presentation that Bob is going to present. I was just kind of looking over some of the slides and I've not seen it really communicated before the difference between data governance and data literacy and the impact that one has on the other. So some really good information coming up. Um, I wanted to start real briefly with a um, survey that we have been working with IDC on and on the next slide, Shannon. Um, just to tell you a little bit about what we see going on in the marketplace. Um, this, this survey was a, a series of questions having to do with what do the end users need to improve upon their data and make better data decisions. And their expectations were that they would be able to see where the data was coming from, understanding the scores of the data itself and the impacts on the downstream um, elements that the data is flowing to, um, being able to understand it in business context. So having that data literacy across many different places of the, the organization, not just leaving it up to one part of the organization to um, create those standards and understand the data, but to understand the data across the entire enterprise. And then finally, um, they also expect to understand where to go to get this data, but we're still seeing that as a major problem. So um, the other question that we asked them was, where do we need the most improvement in um, being able to find the answers to your data? And they equated back to the top four um, expectations. So uh, when they needed to be able to find, um, it, their expectations were not being met and really needed a lot of improvements along these lines. Next slide. So from our perspective, how can data intelligence, the overall data intelligence program help you with data literacy, with data governance? Um, and from our perspective, data literacy starts with easy to use and easy to configure visuals on the data itself. So being able to go to a, a really good user interface that's very familiar, has some Amazon-like categorizations, has familiar search screens to really help and aid and increase the user adoption. Um, these visuals like data lineage that support both high level um, understanding of the scope of where that data is coming from, as well as down to the column level will help you really quickly validate the data that's coming, is the data coming from an authenticated source? Is the data something that has been governed? Um, do we have a common understanding of this data? So having these visuals online in a system at their fingertips is really helping them solve the data intelligence problem. And then behind the scenes, everything that that's appearing in those screens um, is automated. So being able to automate the data management operations in general is something that's really helping our users um, scale out that data literacy across the organization. So being able to scan metadata for the inventory of your data landscape and, and being able to see uh, data quality results in that information. Is my um, bad data being propagated to another business unit? 
Um, it really tells a good story between understanding how good and bad data is propagating. And it's also helping you detect where you need to go do some forensics on the data, where you might be having some um, issues. Uh, the other part of automation is also rationalizing the business to the technical um, pieces of the data itself and your business assets. So being able to use something like AI and connecting with data models will help you get you onto a clear path to understanding the business impact to the data and vice versa. And next slide. Yep, this is the right slide. Uh, we want to from an Irwin perspective, I'm just gonna briefly tell you a little bit. Um, Irwin has started and, and, it's, and it has made its name from a data modeling perspective over there on the left-hand side, thank you. Um, where, you, where we're understanding our business assets in Evolve and how they're modeled out, as well as the data models, your logical, physical, and conceptual data models, so that you can start to really categorize your new data bricks or snowflake environment and start with good, healthy data standards. Our data intelligence suite is integrated with those great data models, and I'm gonna talk about that on the next slide, but um, it's giving you a business flow into the discovery assets um, through a catalog, as well as um, understanding the data quality at an element level, and also bringing in the data literacy aspects so that you can reach a common understanding um, and, and have more controlled freedom in the usage of that data because you have transparency down into how that information is flowing, where it's sourced from, and how it's been defined. My last slide um, is on what makes us different. From an Irwin perspective, um, as I said, we started 30 years ago inside of the Irwin data modeling space, as well as the um, business assets and processes space. And we feel like having Irwin models or any modeling tool, you're getting the best and the brightest in a room to talk data architecture and to set those standards from day one. So to be able to use and accelerate a data intelligence program using that great those great data standards already is helping folks get up and running in their DI program much quicker. And we've also defined um, critical data elements, PI tags, sensitive data, um, and the logical and the business information right into the data lineage so you can start to see it from a business perspective. So um, from our perspective, we're helping you accelerate your data intelligence program with the highest caliber of enterprise data standards that are available to you already in your organization. So with that, I'm gonna turn it back to Shannon, who's gonna give it back to Rob to talk about data literacy and data governance. So thank you for your time. Thank you, Sue, and thanks to Arun by Quest for sponsoring today's webinar and helping to make these webinars happen. And if you have questions for Sue or about Irwin, feel free to submit them in the Q&A as panel, as uh, Sue will likewise be joining us for the Q&A portion at the end of the webinar today. Now, let me introduce to you our speaker for the series, Bob Siner. Bob is the president and principal of KIK Consulting and Educational Services and the publisher of the data administration newsletter, tdan.com. Bob specializes in non-invasive data governance, data stewardship, and metadata management solutions. And with that, I'll give the floor to Bob to start his presentation. Hello and welcome. Hi, Shannon. Hi, Sue. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for the, the nice introduction. And Sue, nice for uh, thank you very much for saying the nice things that you said about my slides. It's kind of a preview to the session we're going to give today. Um, and, and, and of course, it's always great to be able to speak to you once a month. This is a really hot topic. This is a topic that, you know, we schedule some of the topics for the webinar series in advance, and they all seem to be hitting at a time, the topics seem to be hitting at a time that they're really hot. And this is a very hot topic right now, data literacy. And as Sue was saying, there's a lot of organizations that there's not a lot of consistency or understanding as to how the two relate or what is doing, whose responsibility is data governance, whose responsibility is data literacy. So I'm glad that we have this as the topic for today. So before I start into the webinar, 
uh, as always, I'd like to just share a little bit of some of the things that I'm doing. Uh, as uh, you can see, I'm very engaged in the data management, data governance industry next month. And it's very interesting that Sue talked so much about data intelligence, because next month we're going to talk about using data governance to build data intelligence. So I don't know if that's a term that you're using in your organization yet, but it is starting to be used by organizations. I have got some upcoming events that I'll be speaking at. The one that is the newest on the list is I'll be speaking at the DGIQ East conference in Washington, DC in December. Um, I talk a lot about non-invasive data governance. So if you're interested in learning more about non-invasive data governance, my book is available uh, in multiple different formats, multiple different languages now. Uh, there's also online learning plans available through Dataversity on non-invasive data governance, non-invasive metadata governance, and uh, glossaries, dictionaries, and catalogs. And the, uh, you know, please go visit the Data Administration Newsletter and uh, a, my, my consulting business. And I'm also working at the Carnegie Mellon University as, uh, as I have time to be able to do that. Um, and it's really interesting. So this webinar today, I really want to get some information from you from, during this webinar as well. And I can't see the chat right now, but I'm I'm curious as to you know what some of you will say to some of the questions that I'm just going to randomly ask. But in this webinar, the first thing that I want to do is describe the relationship between data governance and data literacy. And then I want to talk about ways that data governance can be used to help to enable data literacy if we have determined that they're not the same thing and what the differences between these things are. Um, a lot of organizations are trying to figure out where data literacy should reside in the organization. So who should own data literacy? Just like since many of you are data governance practitioners, you've asked the question, who is, who is the appropriate owner of your data governance program? Well, we need to be asking the same thing about data literacy. Um, we need to include, since you'll find here very quickly, that data literacy has a lot to do with the understanding of the data and the ability to be able to use the data. Um, and there's a lot of understanding that needs to be provided to the organization, that data governance needs to be one of those topics that you're including when you're trying to make your organization data literate. We'll talk about the direct impact of data governance on data literacy. I like to start my webinars by just real quickly going through some basic definitions, and then we certainly want to define what data lit literacy is here in a minute. These definitions keep getting shorter and shorter as I try to apply them to the context of what we're talking about in today's webinar, but data governance being the execution and enforcement of authority, you know, the following of the rules um, that we're not being asked to follow, we're being told that we need to follow. There's the formal accountability for data being data stewardship. And you've heard me say many times that potentially everybody in the organization is a data steward. If a person has a relationship to the data as a definer, producer, or user of the data, and they're being held formally accountable for how they're defining or how they're producing or how they're using the data, they are a data steward. So basically anybody and everybody could be a data steward, but then the definition of metadata is really applicable to the context of what we're talking about today. So metadata is data that improves both the business and technical understanding of the data. And in order to become literate as an organization, when it comes to data, it means that we're gonna need to understand the data of the organization. So. What I did was I went out and I got four definitions of data literacy, and I'll just share them real quickly with you. There's the Gartner definition. There's the, the data literacy project. I didn't know there was a data literacy project. They have a definition of, of data literacy. Um, a, a more random one that I, I picked from a, a list that I had, and then one that came from Dataversity. If you look at them, the words that I highlighted in red are really what's most important here. So data literacy, and you may have seen some of these definitions before, data literacy is the ability to understand, share common knowledge, and have meaningful conversations about the data. And then kind of jump down to the third bullet because it says competencies involved in working with the data. So in order to become data literate, we need to have competencies involved in how people are gonna be able to work with the data. And then the last definition came from a Dataversity article from two people, one of whom went to the college that my daughter went to. Uh, so I found that to be quite interesting. But data literacy is the ability to read, work with, analyze, and argue with data. I love that term of arguing with data. 
but it really comes down to understanding of the data. So really the focus of literary, literacy is not only is not only on the understanding, but it's getting people to be able to work with that understanding and work with the data. So it's interesting when somebody is said to be literate, here are some of the words that are used to describe those people. They're well-read, they're knowledgeable, they're cultured. That's kind of an interesting one, but, it, but they're cultured. This is a, a synonym for the word literate. Um, some of the words I, I don't use often, um, but, you know, literary, informed, scholarly, all of those things are, are how you would describe somebody to be data literate. The one thing that I saw missing in all of the synonyms for the word literate was the ability to be understood. And that is to, so, and, and I actually reached out to several friends and I talked to them about, you know, do you need to be understandable in order to be data literate? And I would say that that is a valid addition to the list of words that could be used to describe literate. We need to be understandable. So not only do we need to understand the data, but we need to be able to present that data in such a way that it's understandable to other people in the organization. So we're not just pointing at one person being data literate, we're talking about the entire organization being data literate. So let's start out by defining the relationship between data governance and data literacy. And um, you know, the first thing I need to say is that the people that are putting data governance programs together, they don't have the time for data literacy. I don't mean that in a rude way. I mean, it's just that they don't have the resources. They don't have the time to handle data, data literacy as well as getting a data governance program in place. I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. Um, part of the relationship between governance and literacy is formalizing behavior and accountability for the data so that we can improve the understanding of the data. And that is basically the definition of data governance and data stewardship. And we'll talk about the most important question, uh, most important word in the English language being the word why. We'll talk about how data literacy requires a focused effort, just like data governance, and how just like data governance, data literacy needs to partner with corporate communications if that's not where it resides in the organization in the first place. So when I say and it's interesting. So here you'll see a music reference on this slide. And I've done this in, in the last several webinars. But, you know, there's a great song called No Time. And I'm saying data governance has no time for data literacy. And the reason why I say that is that it requires resources to address data literacy, at least from an organizational perspective. Somebody's going to have to have the responsibility for it. Um, and most often, at least from what I've seen in the organizations that I've worked with, they don't have a ton of resources just sitting around waiting to be their data governance team, their data governance office. They're oftentimes understaffed. In fact, many organizations talk about building out their capacity to govern data better as they add people and they add the capabilities to, uh, to what they're doing. So that, that's really important. Data, data governance has other things to focus on they can certainly partner with um, data literacy or those people that are putting the data literacy um, program together. Um, they, so they certainly should consider partnering with skilled communicators. And what would be really helpful is if we could seek some common and effective messaging and instruments um, to, to help or the organization to, to become more data literate and look for what those commonalities are and and present data governance and data literacy as different things, but how they work together and how they are, are important to each other. So the, as we're defining the relationship between data governance and data literacy, I said data governance is the formalization of behavior. Data stewardship is the formalization of accountability. Well, maybe data literacy is formalizing the understanding to assure that we have the appropriate behavior and the, uh, the appropriate accountability. So data literacy, in itself can, can oftentimes be dependent on how well data is being governed within the organization. So we're, again, we're talking about the relationship between data governance and data literacy. Is it possible to become a very data literate organization if you are working with ungoverned data? So that's a question for you to ask yourselves. And, and I'd be curious as to what you have to say, because, you know, Governed data is well defined. It's well understood. How do you become data literate if you don't have definition and you don't have understanding of the data? 
So that, that there is a very tight relationship, obviously, between governance and literacy, but they're not exactly the same thing. So I started looking to see, I kept seeing over and over again, as I was looking for more information about data literacy, that they kept talking about the word why. And I guess, you know, the way industry in general looks about looks at literacy is people want to be able to answer the question why. And that's going to be through their understanding and their understanding of the availability of the data, the understanding of, uh, of the data itself. And a good friend of mine, uh, a fellow person who also speaks at a lot of data diversity events, events, Danette McGilvery, has her five why technique. So once you ask the question why, to really understand the essence of what is needed in somebody's knowledge when it comes to something, you know, they'll answer the question, but then ask the question why again, and why again, and again, and then you're eventually, they may get tired of you asking why, but you're going to get to the, to the true essence of what needs to be analyzed and, and what we need to govern data around and where we need to be data literate. So there are certain questions besides for just the question why that are gonna to lead to literacy. And actually, as I was looking back at these slides, it's not even just the questions leading to literacy, it's the answers to these questions that will really lead to literacy in the organization. People wanna know what data exists. They wanna know how the data is defined, how the data is produced, how did the data get it to be the way that it is in the resource that I'm looking at? Especially if I wanna have confidence in that data, I need to know Sorry, the lineage. Did you say that? I need to know the lineage. I need to know where that data came from. Where is the data? Where's the metadata? I know that Sue talked about that before. Oh, who's responsible for the data? What are the rules for the data? How can I use the data? You know, what do I need in order to fully trust the data, in order to make decisions from the data that I trust? So that, that's really important. Again, while defining the relationship between governance and literacy, there are certain things that we as data governance practitioners can focus on doing, providing the answers to those questions that are on the screen right now in order to help make people in the organization data literate. I hope that makes sense to you. If you have other questions, throw them in the chat or throw them somewhere or send them to me or something, because I'd love to kind of build up a list of what are the questions that really need to be answered in order to lead to a data literate organization. So again, when we talk about the relationship between data governance and data literacy, I always talk, I use the word resolute a lot. There needs to be a resolute effort to have a data governance program because a data governance program is not going to execute and enforce itself. So just like that with data literacy, you know, looking at this picture on the right, you know, that fish had to have a plan as to how it was going to get from the small uh, bowl into the bigger bowl. So just like data governance, we need to have a very intentional effort within the organization in order for us to become data literate. It's not going to have it happen magically. I wish I had magic pixie dust for that, or we could send it, just sprinkle it over everybody, and all of a sudden everybody becomes literate. But it, to be honest with you, in order to have a data literacy program, and I've kind of already made the case that it's not going to necessarily reside in data governance, although data governance would be a partner to it. There has to be somebody who's guiding the data literacy effort. There needs to be somebody who put together a plan and then somebody to actually execute on that plan. So again, data literacy, we're not going, going to go from being data illiterate, whatever that means, to becoming data literate without having a plan and without executing on that plan. Somebody has to gauge the effectiveness of the program. They have to include stewardship when it comes to becoming literacy literate. Um, people in the organization need to understand that their relationship to the data, whether it's as a definer, producer, or user, they need to be held formally accountable for that relationship. So stewardship is certainly a part of literacy. Stewardship also needs to be a big part of, uh, of data governance, obviously. Um, and you know, somebody, there has to be somebody in the organization that's going to govern the literacy, liter the literacy effort in the organization. And I put on here as a joke because you're seeing everything as a service. I'm thinking that potentially within organizations, and I don't know if anybody's talking about this yet, they could talk about data literacy as a service as well. And another relationship between these two is that, and I always talk about how data governance should really partner with the if your organization has corporate communications people, people that are truly skilled 
at getting the message out and getting messaging to the appropriate audiences, they should become a partner of the data governance program. They should also, again, if it's if your data literacy program doesn't reside in your corporate communications group, it's important to partner with that corporate communication group. It is that important that we need to get corporate communications involved. Um, because what are they good at? They're good at, at the messaging. They're good at telling the stories. I had a client recently who said that they wanted to innovate to literate, uh, to literate really within their organization. They talked about using something that, that was the hub of knowledge in the organization. It could be the data catalog. It could be the place where people go to get their understanding of the data that they need to use to do their daily job. And so they had a hub, a place, a catalog for places for people to go. They decided they also wanted to not be very invasive in getting people to be literate. They did not use the term non-invasive data literacy, but they could have. Um, and they liked the idea that potentially as part of the literacy, they needed to get everybody in the organization to recognize themselves as being a steward of the data, or, or at least get them to recognize that what they do with the data has an impact, has an impact on them has an impact on their coworkers, has an impact on the bottom line of the organization. So now let's talk about ways that data governance can enable data literacy. And one way is through formalization of accountability. Another way is I'm going to go back to the definitions that I shared earlier, but I also talked about having a commonality of goals between data governance and data literacy, and then take a quick look at the commonality of the journey between the two of these, looking at them as partners, as kind of working together. So um, when it comes to formalizing accountability, and I know that I had the definitions before and I'm gonna have them on the next slide as well, I think, but we need to consider, first of all, what does it mean to hold people formally accountable for what they're doing with the data, for how they're defining the data, providing good business definition, how they're producing the data, you know, paying attention to how they're producing the data, um, in improving the quality of the production, and then certainly the use of the data. So if we go back and we look at the, the definitions that I provided from Gartner to the Literacy Project, you know, all of these different resources, things that we should be asking ourselves about our organization is think about how getting people in the organization to be formally accountable for the definitions that they're providing of the data, how is that gonna enable data literacy within our organization. Again, if we're gonna go back to understanding of the data, the understanding is gonna come from the metadata, the definition, the stuff in the data catalog, the stuff that's gonna be used to drive your data intelligence. So just think about within your organization, you know, how, if we can formalize and we can improve the way that the data is defined, what impact is that gonna have on our data literacy? The same thing to consider again within your organization. How is holding people formally accountable for how they're producing the data going to enable literacy? So those people who are on the front lines, those people who are entering in data, those people who are changing data, you know, everybody needs to know that any impact that they have on the production of the data is going to, you know, hopefully have a positive impact on business outcomes that come from that data. But we need to consider how holding people formally accountable for data production is going to improve the quality of the data, which is going to improve the confidence in the data, which is going to improve the literacy of the organization around that data. And then the same thing holds true for data usage. I mean, if we can get people to use the data, understand how to use the data, and we can hold them formally accountable for that, think about how that's going to enable literacy within your organization. But you know, but there's one thing also to consider when you think about these things within your organization, that having formalized accountability for the definition, for the production, for the usage of data does not necessarily um, assure you that you're going to have a data literate organization. There's other things that need to be done besides having good definition. We need to make certain we can get that definition into the hands of people that need it so that they can truly use the data the way they want to use the data. And again, just you know, ways to for data governance to enable data literacy, go back to those underlined words in the definitions of data literacy in these different places that I pulled the definitions from and say, you know, what can we do? What can our data governance program do that will improve the understanding 
you know, improve our ability to have a, a common language and to have meaningful conversations around the data. You know, any of these definitions, you could pick them apart and but just I suggest if you're moving forward with a data literacy program in your organization that you want to make certain that it aligns with however you're defining data literacy in your organization. So some additional ways that data governance can enable data literacy is they can assure that they, the understanding of the data, the context, the metadata, that it's high quality, that it's governed. I know you've heard me say, but if you've attended these webinars before, the metadata is not going to govern itself. Somebody has to govern the metadata, just like the data. But to data governance can help to make sure that the data and the context and the metadata is of high quality. It is being governed and it is being made available. Assure that the common knowledge of the data is being captured and shared. Again, don't want to read through all of these. But again, I think it's a good list of if you're looking for ways that we can connect data governance to data literacy. You know, assuring the commonality of business language. One of those definitions talked about it as that being data literacy is the second language of the organization. Um, assure competency and definition, production, and usage. Assure capabilities to do all those things that the definition spelled out, which is people need to find the data. They need to be able to read it, work with it, analyze, argue with it, all of those types of things. So let's see. So let's talk a little bit about the commonality of goals. Well, I think in order to for an organization to become data literate, they're going to need to execute and enforce authority. Because again, if everybody is left to do their own thing, you know, again, you may follow a federated model versus a centralized or a more authoritative model. But at the end of the day, however you're doing it, at least some level of authority needs to be executed and needs to be enforced in order to become data literate. And certainly that is my definition of data governance. So in order to get to the point where we have truly governed data, we need to execute and enforce authority. We need to formalize accountability. Again, my definition of stewardship. So there's a commonality in the goals of literacy is to get everybody in the organization potentially to understand their impact that they have on the data, the, the impact that they have that their data impact has on the organization. So formalizing accountability is a common goal. Protecting sensitive information, that seems to be at the top of the list for many organizations. Improving quality, understanding, discoverability, access to the data. These are all the goals of data governance. And you know what, if we're gonna become more literate as an organization, we need to improve the quality. We need to improve the understanding. We need to improve how easy it is for people to find the data that they need or even to learn about data that they didn't know about that exists within the organization. Improving access. The goals of data governance and the goals of data literacy are similar. I won't say they're exactly the same, but they, they are side by side. They are hip to hip, basically. So let's talk about the commonality of the journey. Um, you know, the, the common of the journey is literacy really benefits from having governed data to help to improve people's confidence and understanding in the data. Governance benefits from literacy. If people understand the data and they understand that they play a role in the improvement of how we're executing and enforcing authority over that data, governance can benefit from literacy as well. They both benefit from stewardship. They both benefit from metadata. These are our core pieces of our journey when it comes to implementing a good data environment, a, a good data landscape within our organization. So they've got commonality of journey. They've got commonality of goals. Let's find ways to connect these things together. And so when I say that they both benefit from the metadata, and if you've been attending these webinars in the past, you know that I say it a lot, is that the metadata is not going to govern itself. So you have to do the same things with the metadata as you do with the with the data of the organization. People need to know what metadata exists and how to use that metadata in order to become more data literate. Okay, so let's talk about where data governance or where data literacy, I'm sorry, should reside in the organization um, or the appropriate ownership. And I don't have a single answer for you. So just bear with me for a second. We'll talk about a best practice approach. We'll talk about where potentially your data literacy program should live, corporate communications, data storytelling. Let's jump through these. So the best practices when it comes to data governance, the very first best practice used by 100% of my clients is that senior leadership support, sponsor, and understand the activities of data governance, because without that, you're going to be at risk at some point. 
Well, the same thing holds true for senior leadership need to support, sponsor, and understand why you need to become literate, what the value is that's going to come from becoming data literate. Um, and then, you know, a second best practice or another best practice organizations use a lot is we need to place this in the appropriate place within the organization. There is not a single place. It could be in IT, it could be in communications, it could be under the chief data officer, it could be a lot of different places in your organization. And you know the, the criteria I use for the best practices that they have to be practical and doable, and that we'll be at risk if we don't achieve these things. If senior leadership at some point doesn't understand or support or sponsor data literacy, your data literacy program is going to become at risk. Data literacy will not improve on its own. So let's spend just a minute here. I know we've got about 15 minutes left before I turn it back to Shannon for some Q&A, but I'm having a problem with my monitors where I can't see the Q&A, but I'd just be curious. I will go back and look at the chat, but answer a question for me just real quickly, if you would. Do you have a formal effort within your organization to improve data literacy? And if you do have a have an effort underway to improve data literacy, where in the organization or who in the organization is responsible for your data literacy program? And I really wish I could see the results right now. You know, here's some examples of what I'm looking for as results. And again, I'm going to alert, use this information not publicly. It's just I'm, I'm very curious as to how many organizations have data literacy programs in place. So you could say, yes, it's owned by change management. Um, no, I wish we had one. Or yes, it's corporate communications. You know, I'd be very curious when I go back to see where does your data, data literacy program exist if you have one? Because I think what you're probably going to see is that it's not the same place in every organization. Um, corporate communications, um, I'm not necessarily saying that that is the place for it, but I, I say that to, for it to reside in the organization. But I say we need to partner with corporate communications for reasons that I shared before. These are people that are skilled with messaging. They can do enterprise campaigns to help to improve the literacy of the organization, the data literacy of the organization. Um, I often talk about putting together a communication plan that includes orientation communications, onboarding communications when you ask somebody to do something, and then ongoing communications. I think you're going to need the same things for data literacy as you would have in place for data governance. You need to orient people to the concept because they're not familiar with what data literacy means. Um, you need to onboard them when you're asking them to do something. And then you, you need to have ongoing communication to keep them data literate. It's not like flipping a switch and all of a sudden people are data literate and then they they're, it's either on or off. Um, you need to continue to provide the understanding and the knowledge to them. So the... Um, Another thing to think about is you, you might want to consider mapping your data literacy program to your enterprise strategy, or if you have an enterprise data strategy, mapping it to the enterprise data strategy. And keep in mind that you know when organizations these days are creating data strategies, they're including data governance as a piece of that overall roadmap as part of that strategy. I think we need to start including data literacy as part of the roadmap. Some organizations may be ahead of the game and be doing that, but more organizations that are putting together enterprise data strategies are starting to include literacy as part of that. And you might see in the language that's being provided in your organization that you want to become data first, you want to become data literate, you want to become data centric or digitally transformed, all of these things. If your goal is to become a data first organization, you're going to need to have people be become more literate than they are now about the data that you have in your organization. When it comes to data storytelling, I um I can't remember who said this first and where I got it from. So if somebody knows, please let me know. Um, there's really two type, types of, of storytelling when it comes to the data, and they're very different from each other. There's stories about the data, you know, stories about what we can do with the data, what happened because of the data, or, or I'm sorry, those are stories about the data, about the quality of the data, of the ownership of the data, and then there's stories with data, and that would be what type of business impact did we have? Um, where did we make have some uh, added value business outcomes within our organizations? So you can have stories about the data, and that's what a lot of a lot of us data practitioners are really good at. 
is telling stories about why data is important and why it is an asset and why it needs to be managed and why we need to have metadata. But then we're not as skilled at in order for us to help the organization to become more data literate, we need to be able to tell stories with the data as well. And, you know, that is, and that really requires having some business knowledge, working with business people who can articulate you know, where the quality of the data matters, where the um, the time to access of the data really matters within the organization. So, you know, ask yourself the question, what does data storytelling have to do with data literacy? Well, the more that we can tell stories about the data in such a way that's understandable to the organization, the better, the more literate we will become. Uh, you know, the, the better we can tell stories with the data, I think that's even going to be more important. It's going it, to, we tell stories with the data, people can understand why we need to improve quality, why we need to improve understanding, why we need to improve accessibility to data. So another topic, let's talk about including governance as a, a topic that's discussed when we start to talk about data literacy. So we'll talk about governance as an enabler of data literacy. We've talked about that a little bit already. Traditional orientation communications, the fact again that everybody is a steward. We'll look at some other data, uh, data literacy topics as well. But when it comes to data governance as an enabler of, of data literacy, governance is in place to execute and enforce authority over the management of the data. Governance can also be in place to execute and enforce authority over the management of the metadata so that the metadata improves the understanding and thus the literacy of the organization. Um, governance is the formalizer of accountability. I mean, because otherwise, I, and I've heard this from so many organizations that we don't hold people accountable or that there is no accountability for data. Nod your head up and down if that's one of your organizations, because it might be, might be your organization. But Somebody needs to take on that responsibility of formalizing accountability for the management of data. And so how are we going to improve the understanding, the definition, production, and use if we can't hold people accountable? And how are we going to become data literate if we don't have good definition, production, and usage of the data? So data governance is truly an enabler of data literacy. It is a provider of the understanding. It is all things basically to enable data literacy within your organization. So remember these synonyms that I used earlier, including the one understandable, which wasn't there, but that I added. Um, we were, are trying to enable people in the organization to become well-read, knowledgeable, cultured, literary, all of these types of things when it comes to the data, the the lifeblood, the the um, the oil that, that basically runs through the pipelines in the organization. We need governance as an enabler of data literacy. Um, when I talk about communications, <coughs> excuse me, um, the three O's of data communicate of data governance communication can tie in, as I said before, to data literacy. There's orientation, onboarding, and ongoing communication. We need to include data governance communications, and it needs to be very intentional and it needs to be repeated. I can't tell you how many organizations have told me that it takes, and I've, I've, I've noticed this, is it takes being told something a few times in order to really understand it. So when it comes to data literacy, don't whip a little bit of data literacy education on somebody and then say, okay, you're done, you're data literate. No, it's gonna be an ongoing adventure, an ongoing journey to get people in the organization to be data literate. And it has to be intentional. Somebody is, needs to be focusing on it because just like data governance, if you take all the resources away, it's going to be very difficult to be successful with a data governance program. It has to be intentional, has to be repeatable. There need to be resources that are applied to it, like we talked about before. So what I suggest as a way to include governance as a literary topic, maybe you want to consider bundling data governance, data stewardship, data literacy, and data leadership together. Because I think those things all together are going to really help the organization to, as an outcome, become more data literate. And I talk about how everybody is a data steward. A data steward is somebody that's held formally accountable for what they do with data. And what they do with data is they define it, they produce it, and they use it. They may do some other things, but typically those other activities fall under definition, production, and use. Um, and we need to understand that potentially everybody in the organization either defines and or produces and or uses data. So therefore, potentially, if we want to cover the entire organization, everybody's a data steward. 
So we're going to need to communicate with everybody about data governance. We're going to have to make everybody data literate. We've got a lot of work to do. This is not going to be solved in a day. Ro the Roman Empire wasn't built in a day or a week or a month. This is going to take time to do it. But the only way to do it is to start now. Um, so recognize data stewards based on their relationship to the data. Take a stewardship approach or stewardship method um, to really implement your governance program. And what are some of the other data literacy topics? Well, you can work in the people aspect of governance, the people aspect of literacy, the process aspect of governance and of literacy, technology of both. Um, but accountability is going to be one of those key, key topics that need to be shared as part of this communication about data literacy. So the last topic that I want to share with you, and then we'll turn it over to Shannon for some questions. Um, is we want to talk about the direct impact of data governance on data literacy. Look at that poor dinosaur in that picture with the with the meteor coming at him. That's good. He's he's waiting for a direct impact. So we'll talk about the formal governance of data results in, and I'll, I'll outline a list of things that formal governance will re result in business outcomes through partnership. We'll talk about that. I'm not going to really focus on the lack thereof. Just think about the opposite of everything I'm going to say here in a minute. Um, and then everything goes with data governance. So let's go, go through these and turn it back to Shannon. Formal governance of data results in these things. It results in accountability. It results in confidence. Documentation, because if you know, I don't know how well your data environment is documented today, but formal governance can assure that documentation is being addressed. Um, literacy of the data, quality of the data. So formal governance can result in a lot of things in your organization. If we think about like if we had a, if this was an equation and instead of having those look like minus signs there were plus signs down the left-hand side, if we all added it up and put a line under that, I think the word would be understanding. I mean, we're gonna build understanding of data within our organization. We're gonna build literacy for data within the organization by holding people accountable, by giving them confidence in the data, by documenting the heck out of the data, by giving them literacy training, by providing quality, um, uh, giving them confidence that the data is of high quality. Look for positive outcomes through partnerships across your organization. Look for outcomes that are related to the confidence um, the confidence that people have from data definition, the confidence that people have from data production, and confidence that people have in knowing how to use the data and what the rules are associated with the data and how data needs to be handled. So look for one of the direct impacts of governance on literacy is positive business outcomes that come through confidence from definition, production, and usage of the data. And the, uh, the almost the uh, last slide here, I can honestly remember in the last six months that I have said that so many different things can only be successful with data governance. And the, you know, the fact is that it's true. So data literacy, I've said, is, it can only really be um, successful if you have governed data. Um, but I've said that about quality and metadata and mesh and fabric, and I'm sure that I'm missing others. But you know, I guess one of the points being made by our real world data governance webinar series is that data governance, it ties into all of these things. And it's going to be very, it's going to be very difficult to become a data literate organization unless you have some well governed data within the organization or to become literate for the data that is governed within the organization. I think those two go hand in hand. So just think about that as you move your programs forward. So today, what did I talk about? I talked about the relationship between governance and literacy. I talked about ways that governance can enable literacy, Sorry, where, where it should, could exist within an organization. Um, there's no single answer for that. We talked about including governance as part of our data literacy message to the organization, and then the impact that data governance has on data literacy. So thank you very much for sitting through the webinar today. And with that, Shannon, I'm going to turn it back over to you. Um, thank you so much. As always, if you have questions for Bob or Sue, feel free to submit them in the Q&A section. There's a lot of great questions coming in, but just to know if we don't get a chance to get to your question today, um, do feel free to keep submitting them in as we will get the answers to you in the follow-up email. Uh, and to answer the most commonly asked questions, just a reminder, I will send a follow-up email by end of day Monday with a link to the slides and links to the recording as well as anything else requested. Uh, from this webinar to all registrants. So diving in here, um, 
I work in higher ed where literacy has a very specific meaning. Also where the higher up the food chain you are, the less data literate you are likely to be generally generalization, but roll with me here. Um, how do you address the sensitivity around the concept of being data illiterate, particularly with the executive suite? Wow, I was gonna let Sue answer that question first, but I, I guess I'll, I'll take it. That's a tough question. Um, yeah, especially in higher ed, where uh, where I would assume that be, being literate has a specific meaning. You may not want to you might not want to confuse things. You might want to call it something else. But the idea is again to get people understanding. And <clears throat> when you say that literacy decreases as you move up the food chain in the organization, that may be because people who are down in in, in the dirt know the data better or they they know where to go to get information about the data as you get up the food chain to the higher levels they may not have access to these tools so one thing that we can do to improve that is to provide some of these access some of the access to some of the the information about the data to improve people's understanding to improve their literacy at all levels not just the operational and tactical levels that's my answer sue you have anything to say about that yeah, I think that's really good. And that's where my train of thought was going to was towards, um, I've seen a lot of clever ways of doing surveys and questionnaires and things like that, um, that kind of drive folks to to go to their knowledge base for the answers um, and, and socialize what some of those answers to the data questions are. Perfect. So how do we measure data literacy? How do we measure data literacy? Yeah, because we're going to be asked to measure data literacy. Um, well, you know, the way I'd address that first is uh, once you figured out how you're going to measure it, take a measurement right away. So you have a place to a benchmark, you have a starting point so you can actually measure. So, but the question is, how do we actually measure it themselves? You know what, you may just want to pull people within the organization and ask them at, on, when it comes to certain things. I wouldn't ask them just point blank, how data literate are you? They won't understand. You know, break it down into bite-sized chunks and ask them, or how confident are you in the data? How, you know, do you know where to go to get the data? You know, you could also use those questionnaires to gather other information, but specifically for data literacy, you know, ask people how they, how literate they feel, and then apply some some technology, some people, some process, some technology, and then measure it again. That's what my thought is. I mean, I I haven't been asked to measure literacy yet. Sue, do you have any thoughts on that as well? Uh, same thing. That's what I was thinking as well. But and, and I really like what you said about having a baseline of where you're at today. How knowledgeable are your um, end users when they're looking at reports and trying to siphon through data and understanding the data that they're seeing. Um, you know, if you do it now versus after you've started an initial data intelligence program, that's where I can start to see um, folks really become much more literate, much more mature, um, and then to also have some sort of maturity process that you're following um, would also help help in that arena I would have guessed too. Yeah, I would think you could evaluate yourself on a on a like a CMM like a, a capability maturity management on a level of one to five. And you could mm -hmm. say we're here and this is where we want to go. And there's the steps that we're going to take to get from being a you know 1.2 to being a 2.8 in the next year. You know, here's the steps that we're going to take to do that. Yes. Yeah. So what would you define as the top five key competencies for data literacy to be data literate? Off the top of your head, Sue, do you have five? Oh, no, I don't have five. <laughs> well, I, I would say, I would say <laughs> it's great to have, it, it's great to have you here on the call because I can, I can divert to you. Um, the, uh, you know, metadata, so, so ask the question again, Shannon, because I want to make sure that we're, we're honing in on those five. Sure. What would you define as the top five key competencies for a data literacy program to be considered is, data literate? Is metadata a competency? I think it, I guess I I'm going to make it a competency because it's not defined for us. 
you know, having metadata, having ownership or accountability. As you know, I may know, I don't like the word ownership because it implies it's mine. I can do with it what I want, you know, is what being an owner of something means. Being a steward is somebody who's taking care of something for somebody else. So stewardship would be a second one. Um, you know, executive, a competency would be that your executives have an understanding as to why all this stuff that we're doing, why are we so nervous about the data that we have? What is what's the outcomes that the organization can expect from paying attention to solving these things? I don't know. There's three. Sue, you have any to add to that? I mean, I'm a big proponent of data lineage and being able to okay. understand data across business lines. Um, so to be able to validate where the information is coming from, whether it's in your department or outside of your department and knowing exactly where it's leaving the organization. Um, and then I would say uh, critical data elements uh, and, and PI information, being able to uh, understand where that critical data is and what the impact of it is if I change it and if I, if I create more or if I delete it, I would say understanding your critical data. Okay, there, there Shannon, there's five. <laughs> <laughs> Off the top of my head. That wasn't fair because it came from Valerie Logan, and I bet Valerie already has five core competencies. <laughs> <laughs> well, I keep, I, um, well, it's interesting, though, that um, would either of you back it up to all the way to just adding, uh, getting people on the same page about what the definition of data governance is? Yeah, I think that that I, I don't know if that's a competency, but it's um, it certainly needs to be communicated. And it's, it, it, you don't want to throw a definition that's going to raise more questions than are answered. So uh, can you talk about the connection between data literacy and data democratization? Well, so data democratization, if I understand it correctly, is putting really the power of using the data in the hands of people. I can't really speak to data democratization too well, but I think that, and so it was the relationship between literacy or between governance and, and data democratization? Literacy. Literacy. Well, I mean, you've got a relationship between governance and literacy, so that's there. So so I would say the governance of the, the relationship between governance and literacy together you know um i think you should look at it from that side and see how do they support you becoming more data democ demo democratized i don't even know how to describe it sue can you help me out here uh, i was thinking the same thing that valerie just post posted data literacy enables responsible data democratization so okay that's that, yep. that says it in a nutshell right there yep transparency Right. And I always trip over that word. It's, it's a tough <laughs> word. <laughs> Do you democratize something or? Right. Yeah. Or, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> well, I think we have time for at least one more question here. Um, uh, we aren't governing just to govern. So our definition of data governance is people, process, and tech to ensure data is an asset. You also can't expect people to be in compliance with data governance programs if they don't understand data. So literacy is part of the data governance program. My thoughts on that? Yeah, well, I mean, when you say that data governance is people process and technology, you're right. There's process and there's technology. Any process itself is a form of governance because it's setting the, st the steps of the things that you're supposed to do. Um, I would say that data governance focuses mostly on the people, on the behavioral side, on getting them to become more understanding of what's available to them. So I don't know if I, I mean, I guess if you can explain why you're including process and technology in your definition, and I think that you can do that, um, that's a fine definition. Um, but it's really focused on people. It's really, when DEMA put data governance right in the middle of the DEMA wheel, that is because the accountability and the and people aspect of all of those different disciplines in in the demo wheel are going to relate are, are going to relate to data governance. So I think it's more focused on the day on the people than the process and the technology. I don't know, Sue. Any different thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I look at data literacy as connecting the dots and connecting. Okay. 
Uh, yeah, connecting those people that understand it from one point of view with the people that maybe understand it way down the chain, the people who are working on those legacy environments and the people that are producing the reports, connecting their worlds together from the, the written explanation of that data. I wondered who the Hillary was that you were, or the Valerie was that you were talking about, and then I just opened the chat and I see who you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is perfect timing as that brings us right to the top of the hour. Thank you both so much for your great presentations today. And thank you so much to Erwin by Quest for sponsoring today's webinar to help making these webinars happen. And of course, special thanks to all of our attendees who are so engaged. I lo always love the chat and the questions. Again, we'll get the rest of the questions answered for you in the follow-up email, which will go out by end of day Monday, also including links to the slides and the recording. Thank you all. Hope you all have a great day. Bob, Sue, thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Excellent. Thanks, Sue. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. Bye. Have a great day. Mm -hmm.